it's identical to the decree in some sense, right? So how could it be corrupted, right? Because if it can be corrupted, why can't the Quran be corrupted? If the prior revelation can be corrupted, why can't this one? So you understand that the early generation of Muslims understood that if you admitted that the words of Allah can be changed and corrupted, then it would fall equally on the Quran. The same argument would apply to the Quran. Jay, can you hear me? Yes, sir. We talked before, right? I don't know. Okay, I... Uh, I mean, are you the only name? Muslim named Ali? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can check my account and you'll see the recent videos I posted. Anyway, uh, did you... Um, Quote 547? Yes. Would you like to talk about it? Sure. I'll go a bit in detail, so if you're lost in anything, just stop me in the middle, okay? Okay. Let's go. So, um, in uh, Quran 547, mm -hmm. okay? The what? Yeah, no, I'm just saying it in Arabic, so uh, okay. yeah, I mean, one second, let me pull out the verse, so I'll make my point more, more obvious, you know? وَلَيَحْكُمْ أَهْلِ الْإِنْجِيلِ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Okay? There's another Qira'a, I think it was Khalaf and Hamza. Al-Tabri states this in, in his Tafsir. He says, in this Qira'a, it says, وَلَيَحْكُمْ with like a shail, a kasra on the bottom. So that completely changes the meaning. That's like, uh, what that means in Qur'an Khalaf and Hamza, it means we reveal to the, uh, the Injil so the people of the Injil can judge with it. That's the new meaning. So when, uh, when we correlate the two meanings in the Qur'an, we'll come out with one meaning, is that this was a command for people that used to have the Injil. ليحكم أهل الإنجيل بما أنزل wait one second وليحكم أهل الإنجيل بما أنزل الله فيه are you lost or <laughs> you think that, you think that's funny now isn't it interesting that the Quran in many places says that it reveals everything and everything is clear but now it turns out it's not because we actually need this hadith to explain that the meaning is actually no, no, not, not what it appears to be right. JJ, do you have you studied Ilm al Qur'at before? Okay, so, right. No, no, I'm asking you. Uh, have you looked into it? So, can you make an argument without throwing all the Arabic terms? Because that doesn't that doesn't impress okay, anybody okay. but I'll, your own crew. I'll, I'll, uh, Nobody's I'll impressed I'll by this but Muslims. So I know you, right. I know. So, and there's about 15 other places, by the way, that also say in the Quran that the previous revelation confirms the new. So it's not just 547, you understand that? You, you want the whole list? I've got 15 here. Okay. Um, also, have I told you that I believe that at the time of the Prophet, there were uncorrupted versions of the Torah and the Jeep? Is that the ones that the Christians and Jews had? Um, yeah, at the time of the Prophet. So the 7th century Christian or Jew had uncorrupted texts that they could go to? In Medina, yeah. In Medina, I mean, do you understand that yes. we have we have the same text as Christians and Jews that Christians and Jews at this time and earlier had? I mean, you also have many lost gospels, so that has nothing to do with this. Lost gospels has nothing yes, to do does. with this. No, it doesn't. We today have the same Torah and gospel and prophets that Jews and Christians at this time had and earlier. Jay, that's besides the point. If the prophet quotes or a sahabi quotes a verse from the torah and you can't find it in your current torah that proves that the torah at the time of the prophet is much different than the torah you have now so all of the no, verses doesn't. you are no quoting, it doesn't <laughs> yeah no all that does is prove that perhaps the quran that, that, misinterpreted or miscited that doesn't prove any that that only proves that if, it, if your position is true which is in question this is a i'll quote the hadith of the Jewish rabbi at the time of the prophet. Oh, so now we got to go to Jewish rabbis for this. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One second. No, we're done. This is retarded. So there's uncorrupted texts that exist at this time, 
he didn't know that we as Christians and Jews have texts that are similar to the texts of the 7th century Christian Jew and earlier. That it's like they can't grasp this. And then he brings up lost gospels. It has nothing to do with this. The pseudepigrapha, the Gnostic texts, have absolutely nothing to do with what the Jewish and Christian Bibles were at this time. This is so silly. And by the way, it's not five, just 547. It's about 15 other texts that also talk about confirming the new revelation with what came before. So you notice what they have to do is say, oh, turns out there was a gospel and an NGL, but it's not what Jews and Christians have. But he just admitted that the Jews and Christians did have it. So everywhere they turn and they try to, when trying to prove this, they they shoot themselves in the foot. That's why they can't get this. Uh, let's let's do this real quick here to point out because I keep saying this, and uh, so we're going to try to run through these fairly quickly. Um, and you'll see that it's not just one or two texts here. It's actually many texts where the Quran directs us to go to the prior revelation, and it puts the Muslim on the horns of a dilemma because they either have to say the prior revelation is corrupt which means that the Quran is contradicting and it's sending us to a corrupt book to confirm it, which is dumb. Or, uh, oh, there's this uh, lost version that Jews and Christians had that we don't have anymore. Well, there is no evidence of this lost version other than these assertions. And you just heard him admit that, oh, 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 he didn't know that we have gospel texts and Torah texts that are seventh century and earlier so they don't it's like they don't even know this right they just assert their position they have no idea about what's actually even in the text by the way uh so let's look at 241 remember O children of israel 40 remember my favors fulfill your covenant and i will fulfill mine stand in awe of me 241 believe in my revelations which confirm your scriptures so notice, the new revelation confirms the revelation to the Jews. Okay, 241. Let's go to 289. Now, I, the reason I'm doing this is that this is stated so many times in the Quran that it's kind of absurd when you get distracted into thinking it's only 547. It's not only 547, okay? 289. Although they used to pray for victory by means of the prophet over the polytheists, when there came to them a book from Allah, which they recognized, this is talking about the Old Testament, confirming the scripture they had in their hands, the, the Quran confirms what's in their hands. Okay? So it's supposed to be continuity. The text that they have, the way the Quran consistently argues, is supposed to be a confirmation of what came before. So there's a, the assumption of continuity. This is not that hard. When it is said, believe what Allah has revealed, they say, we only believe what was sent to us. They deny what came afterwards, though it is the truth confirming their own scriptures. The Quran is supposed to confirm their scriptures, the, the ones they possess, the Bible. This one that we possess, Jews and Christians possess. Indeed, Moses came to you with clear proofs and you worshiped the calf. We took your covenant and raised you to the mountain saying, hold firmly to that scripture, the Torah. You see that? 291, 92, 93. 2101. We're going to go through every one of these so that you see that it's not a one-off. Okay? There's not that many. Well, there's 10, 15 of them. So we're going to go through them all. When a messenger from Allah came to them confirming their own scriptures... The people of the book cast the book of Allah behind their backs as if they did not know. So the argument here in 2.101 is that the Quran is confirming the prior scriptures, meaning there has to be continuity. This is why, by the way, Daniel in his contradictory clips in our debate says, look at all the continuity. And then in the debate with Sam and Ajaz, I never argued for continuity. It's not continuity. Total contradiction. Why do they do that? Well, because the Quran is a bunch of contradictions. That's why. I, let's see, I forgot 2, 278, 79. Among them are the illiterate who know nothing about Scripture except lies. So this is illiterate people. This is one of their texts they reply, reply with, right? So they're going to say, oh, you see, the Quran is saying the Bible's corrupt here in 77, 78. 
It's not saying that. It says that illiterate people who can't read corrupt what the scriptures say. It does not say the scriptures are corrupt. So they'll cite 279 and ignore 278 that's talking about illiterate people. Obviously, if they're illiterate, they can't corrupt it. In other words, they can't corrupt the scriptures themselves, right? They're illiterate and distorting the scriptures through what they say. They know nothing about the scripture and they distort it with their own hands when they say this is from Allah. So, and this goes along with the other text that says that they corrupted it with their tongues. And that's what, 377, 79? It does not say the text themselves are corrupt because many times over, it says that the texts are not corrupt. Indeed, those who trade Allah's covenant and the oaths for a fleeting gain will have no share in the hereafter. Allah will neither speak to them nor look at them nor purify them in the day of judgment. They will suffer a painful punishment. For there are some among them who distort the book. Is it saying that the Torah is corrupted? No, with their tongues. To make you think the distortion is from the book, but it is not from the book. It is literally in the text saying that the book is not corrupted. What do they all say? The book is corrupt. Because they know that if they go with admitting that it's not corrupt, they're in an even worse situation because obviously the Bible contradicts the Quran. Okay, so you see the games that they're playing here? Over and over it says, no, it's not the book is corrupt. It's the illiterate people who distort it with their tongues, not the book. And they say it's from the book, but it's not. Ironically, the very thing that his all his followers do when they argue with us. Isn't that funny? The book is corrupt. Well, Allah says to you, the book is not corrupt, and you're distorting it with your tongue. That's how stupid these people are, right? 3-1. He has revealed to you, O prophet, the book, confirming what came before, as revealed in Torah and Gospel. See that? Confirming what came before in Torah and Gospel. So the... Quran is supposed to confirm what came before, but also Jews and Christians can look to what came before to validate the Quran, supposedly. So it's supposed to be this reflexive thing, and we're, I can explain why they why that's the case, because not many people know this, but <clears throat> what actually happens is that the Quran is supposed to be uh, God's revelation for Arabs. And this is in 543 and 568 that Jews and Christians had a revelation in their language. What are, what are Arabs supposed to do because they don't have the revelation? Well, in steps Muhammad to give the revelation in Arabic. Thus, Jews and Christians are told in 543 to follow their own books. This is something that uh, David Wood recently did a video on that's really, really insightful here to understand what's going on. So 543... <clears throat> Why do they come to you for judgment, Jews, when they already have Torah? Well, how are they doing that if it's all corrupted, by the way? The Torah contains Allah's judgment, you see. So the argument here is that Jews don't need to come to you. They have the Torah. They're, they're fine with that. And then in 568, a similar statement. You see how silly this is. This whole position is silly. Say, O prophet, O people of the book. You have nothing to stand on unless you observe Torah and gospel. How could they observe it if it's corrupt? And what has been revealed to you? See that? So the assumption is Jews follow the Torah. Christians follow the Injil. That's the revelation sufficient for you. But then at the same time, the Quran is supposed to be for all people. It doesn't make sense. The, the whole thing is a bunch of contradictions. Way worse than what they say about us. That's the funny part. All right, so we're going to go through the rest of these. There's many, many more. 348. Did we do that one? I can't remember if we did that one. We'll see. Allah will teach him writing and wisdom. 
Torah and gospel. How are they going to do that if it's all corrupt? And then the one that we just read, 5.43 to 47. Why do they come to you when they have already the Torah? Indeed, we reveal the Torah containing guidance and light, by which the prophets who submitted themselves to Allah made judgments for the Jews. Okay, what prophets? The ones that you read about in the Bible? So the rabbis and the scholars judge according to Allah's book, how they do that if it's corrupted, which was entrusted and of which they were made keepers. Do not fear them, fear me. We ordained for them Torah. You see that? Allah ordained for Jews, ordained for Jews Torah, for Christians and Jew. Don't worry about them. But wait a minute. They have uh, heresies and they believe in polytheism of the Trinity. Yeah, that's because this book is, is contradictory. You see, that's the point. This doesn't make any sense. It's a bunch of cobbled and jumbled up narratives and copy-paste stuff. Then in the footsteps of the prophets, we sent Jesus, son of Mary, confirming the Torah. So notice the Torah for Jews, and then Jesus is supposed to confirm the Torah, which he does. So let the people of God judge by what Allah has revealed in those. So notice, once again, 547, we're supposed to judge by what Allah has revealed. And he comes along and says, oh, but no, the, the, the Tosh Theater, it's corrupt. There's another one, but also there were true gospels. Okay, where is all this? These are just assertions. Where is this true gospel that they had only in Medina and that everyone else didn't have, supposedly? It's just assertions. We have revealed to you, talking to Muhammad, supposedly, even though it doesn't tell us this, we're supposed to assume it's Muhammad, the book of truth, with truth, a confirmation of the previous scriptures and a supreme authority upon them. So judge between them by what Allah has revealed. So the whole principle here of all these texts is the assumption of and the assertion of continuity. So you see how silly this puts, what a silly position this puts them in? Oh, it's corrupt. But now wait a minute, because the early Muslims said it's not corrupt. As Sam Shamoon has shown many times over in that article. We'll pull it up to show you. And we got many more, by the way. This isn't, I'm going to do them all. Here's Sam's article about the arguments that Allah's words cannot be corrupted. <clears throat> Al Bukhari reported that Ibn Abbas said that the ayah means they alter and add, though none among Allah's creation can remove the words of Allah from his books. They alter and distort their meanings. You see that? As for Allah's books, they are still preserved and cannot be changed. So here's Sam's articles, which show you from the early Muslim commentaries that they are in a ridiculous, contradictory position. All right, so let's get to the rest of these. Let's see. Six. Uh, and this, I think, will talk about the, the fact that it can't be altered or corrupted. 6, 1, 14, 15. <clears throat> Say, O prophet, should I seek a judge other than Allah while he is the one who has revealed for you the book with the truth perfectly explained? By the way, if it's perfectly explained, why do we need all these hadiths? Those who were given the scriptures that it has been revealed to you from your Lord in truth. So do not be one of those who doubt. The word of the Lord has been perfected in truth and justice. None can change Allah's words. So wait a minute. If Allah spoke in the Torah and the Anjil, Anjil, but now it's corrupted, how are Allah's words corrupted? Six. One fifty-four. Additionally, we gave Moses the scripture. So notice, Allah's words cannot be corrupted. Allah gave Moses the Torah, but the Torah is corrupted. Hmm. Uh, 
Let's see, next is 9. 32. They wish to extinguish Allah's light with their mouths. But Allah will only allow his light to be perfected, even to the dismay of the disbelievers. He is the one who has sent his messenger with the true guidance of religion and truth, making it prevail over all of the others, even to the dismay of the polytheist. Is this the text, I think, where he talks about how, uh, yeah, <clears throat> they have taken their rabbis and monks as the Messiah, son of Mary, and lords beside Allah, which we don't do that. They just It's just an assertion. There is no God where they worship except him glorified as he above what they associate with him. They wish to extinguish all his light with their mouths. So notice it doesn't say the text is corrupted. It says with their mouths again. And also um, Allah's light and word cannot be corrupted. You see. Allah will only allow his light to be perfected. So if it can only be perfected, then how was it corrupted in the Torah and the Angel? Let's see, next is 10. It is not possible for this Quran to have been produced by anyone other than Allah. In fact, it confirms what came before and an explanation of those scriptures. It is without doubt from the Lord of all worlds. Now, isn't that interesting because this one uh, notes that it is again a confirmation of what came before and it is an explanation of those scriptures. But wait a minute, it's in, it's it contradicts. Oh, but now all his words can't be corrupted. His light cannot fail. It always prevails. Hmm. And what do the early Muslims all say? There it is. They misinterpret and alter the words. Knowingly. They alter all his words, meaning their meaning, not the text itself. So go read Sam's article. The Quran confirms the Bible's never been corrupted. And they just ignore all these commentators. Oh, whatever. Who cares what they said? 21. Surely following the heaven, heavenly record, we decreed in the scriptures, my righteous servants shall inherit the land. So the scriptures are here said to be the decree, right? And if the Quran and Allah's decree, if this is speaking of the unwritten record or whatever, it really doesn't matter because it's saying that it's identical to the decree in some sense, right? So how could it be corrupted, right? Because if it can be corrupted, why can't the Quran be corrupted? If the prior revelation can be corrupted, why can't this one? So you understand that the early generation of Muslims understood that if you admitted that the words of Allah can be changed and corrupted, then it would fall equally on the Quran. The same argument would apply to the Quran. What is this guy saying? I can't tell what he's. Uh, let's see. Next one is 61. By the way, there's probably more than I even have listed here. These are just the ones. The one, these are the ones I've found so far. There's probably more. Uh, there's also 17 too. I forgot about that one. Let's see. So this is one. Uh, 
61.8. They wish to extinguish Allah's light with their mouths. So notice it's not a corruption of the text. But all will perfect his light even to the dismay of the unbelievers. He is the one who has sent his messenger with true guidance, the religion of truth, making it prevail over all the others even to the dismay of the polytheists. And then 17.2. We gave Moses the scripture and made it a guidance for the children of Israel. And we said, do not take me besides any other trustee of affairs. We warn the children of Israel in the scriptures. You will certainly cause a corruption in the land twice and become extremely arrogant. Well, yeah, what scriptures? So in other words, the argument is that the decree, excuse me, the uh, warnings and the giving of the scripture, the revelation to the children of Israel is what the Jews and, the, and Moses have. See that? And note, note here it says, we carried Noah in the ark. So you'll note that many times over the Quran assumes and restates the biblical stories, assuming that the Bible has correct revelation, you see. So you, you see how it's a horns of a dilemma either way. If they say that the texts are all corrupted, then, then there's no way to say that there's any continuity. And it would mean that Allah's words can be corrupted, which we're told can't happen. But if they don't believe it's corrupted, then they have to say that there's a contradiction because clearly the Bible and the Quran contradict each other. Uh, let's see. Is there a... Make sure I didn't miss any. Oh yeah, there's that one text that Sam points out. 355. Because it says that the followers of Christ were made to prevail, which means that Paul is not a false teacher. Remember when Allah said, O oh Jesus, I will take you and raise you to myself, and I will deliver you from those who disbelieve, and elevate your followers above, above the disbelievers. Well, now wait a minute. Paul was one of the followers. So according to this text, Paul didn't invent the Trinity or corrupt Christianity. He's exalted with Christ above the disbelievers. So notice... The narratives, the coherence, the, the narratives are all jumbled and it's not coherent. Uh, J. Mel, now that is a known established, now that is known established that Muslims worship Hubal, Baal, can we start from apologetics when they equivocate over the Quran versus the Bible? Uh, this is a lengthy historical Man. argument that Sam Shamoon made in a recent uh, live stream uh, forget the name of that one but uh, if you go to his channel um, and then Sam went into the history of the Blackstone and Mecca uh, you can get the history the background of that Peter ten dollars it's funny how Christians have to teach Muslims about their own book well I mean the same thing happens in Christianity though because many Christians uh, they don't know what's in their book <laughs> Octavian fifty dollars. Where did the idea of predestination originate in Christianity? Well, I mean, it's in Ephesians. It's in Romans nine. Uh, so, I mean, there is discussions. It's a question though of what it means. So, the words are there, but when Paul writes to the church at Ephesus, uh, the Calvinist interpretation has to mean that Paul's only writing to the elect. But the problem is that he's not. He's writing to an actual visible church at Ephesus with a bishop and calling all of them predestined. So that's why the Calvinist view kind of falls, falls apart pretty easily on that basis. Roll stakes, $5. What is your response to Muslims claiming that the Injil mentioned in the Quran is lost and doesn't exist anymore? That's why we asked them, how would a 7th century Christian or Jew uh, verify these claims? And it's stupid because, as I said to the previous guy, we have today gospel and Torah and prophet texts from the 7th century and earlier. It's that simple. I don't care what this person is saying. We, we want quality argument argue, arguers, so I'll pick what I want. 
By the way, it's also just an assertion. Okay, what's the argument or, or the proof that there's a lost gospel? And by the way, it's not just the gospel, it's also the Torah. And how would the Jews or Christians in the 7th century confirm that the, the teaching is consistent if what they have is lost? This is silly. And by the way, you understand that in Christian theology, we can go to the 7th century Christians. <laughs> it's John of Damascus, right? We, we have all these people. We have massive amounts of writings. The Seventh Ecumenical Council, St. Theodore de Sudai, John of Damascus, Theodore Abu Kura, many Christian theologians, St. Isaac of the Syrian from this time period. It's not, it's not like we, we don't know what the Christians of this time period were, were teaching and what they believe. And there's many texts prior to the seventh century of the gospel, of the Torah, of the prophets, etc. It's, that's why it's so silly. 